Now, the GJA calls it barbarism. Attacks on journalism are on the rise. And with just days to the first anniversary of that police brutality on Joy News' Latif Idrisu, there are more attacks being meted out to uh, journalists and other media professionals. A situation that lovers of the profession, and indeed not just lovers, anybody who's concerned about this country's uh, democracy, find very worrying. Now, Ghanaian Times uh, reporters just yesterday, yeah, just yesterday, Ghanaian, uh, three journalists with the Ghanaian Times newspaper were assaulted by a police officer. And we'll show you a picture of that momentarily. That police officer, with the help of 10 other men, assaulted these three uh, journalists. The officer had jumped traffic, ran into a Ghanaian Times vehicle, and still did not stop. When he was later approached by the Times team, he turned on them and assaulted them. The victims include a nursing mother who recently had a caesarean operation during delivery. We have details of this and other attacks which have happened just this morning, we're hearing. Have a look at this. Well, we'll bring you that video much later, but it was, sh it was, it was, it was about uh, the story of Reverend Owusu Bempa, who today stormed the offices of Radio XYZ, allegedly to attack Salifu Masi. We find out what his reasons are too. Well, right now, let's tell you what the Human Rights Report issued yesterday says about press freedom. So in section two, it says a respect for civil liberties, including a freedom of expression, including for the press, the constitution and law provide for freedom of expression, including for the press and the government generally, and the government generally respected this right. Section 2 says respect for civil liberties, including violence and harassment. On that, the Media Foundation for West Africa counted 17 cases of attacks on journalists from January 2017 to March 2018. Earlier in the year, police assaulted a reporter who had visited the Criminal Investigations Department headquarters to report on the arrest of political party official. The reporter sustained fractures to his skull. And that is, um, a, that is in reference to... Latif Idrisu. So it says that uh, the Human Rights Report says, uh, respect, in terms of respect for li civil liberties, including officials uh, reported, officials reported an investigative report. Uh, beg your pardon, an investigative investigative report was submitted to administrators in May and provided no further information as of September. In June, there were reports that a member of parliament criticized and incited violence against a prominent journalist whose investigative crew produced a film about corruption in Ghana, soccer, including involvement by government officials. And that is in reference to Ahmed Swale uh, uh, and the Tiger IPI group. You know that Ahmed Swale was assassinated um, eventually. I have in the studio Vivian Afor, Afor. she's with the um, Media Foundation for West Africa, who also make attempts to reach the GJA General Secretary, Dave Agbeno, who is also staff of the New Times Corporation, actually an editor there where the victims of yesterday's uh, police brutality happened. And of course, uh, if you feel strongly about those attacks, you can reach us on our WhatsApp uh, number that we'll put on your screen. But before I get to I get to you and, and you're welcome to the show. Before Thank I come you. back to you for us uh, to finish that conversation, let's hear from some of the victims. First, Malik Suleimana, and then uh, Raisa Sambo. Malik Suleimana, a reporter with the Ghanaian Times newspaper, says, when a policeman crossed the red light, he confronted him as a law-abiding citizen to let him know that what he was doing was wrong but that resulted in the policeman beating him. And exactly what happened? So yesterday around 8.45, um, I was in the company vehicle 
to on my way to court. I'm a court reporter. And so when we got to um, the traffic light between Ghana Publishing Company and um, Accra City Hotel, and the red light was on. So as law-abiding citizens, we decided to wait and move on when the green um, light is on. But as usual, you have this police officer who was coming from the back. He was so impatient that he could not wait for the green light. So he, in the course of negotiating his way out, hit the side mirror of our vehicle and it, and, and it got broken in the process and he's paired off. So fortunately for us, there was an Okada driver who was, you know, behind the police officer. So he saw what happened and also decided to chase the policeman. So um, the, right, the green light was on and our driver and our driver drove on. You know, so we managed to block him midway just around the new AMA uh, building. And then I got off the vehicle and started video taping the incident. So the long and short of it is this. The policeman was angry that I was videotaping and he attempted to snatch the phone from me. But he was unsuccessful. So I kept the phone in my pocket and held on firmly. So um, he had to struggle with me moving from one point to another. And let me say this, even before the struggle, when he attempted to snatch the phone and he was unsuccessful, he threw the first punch straight into my face. That's what has caused the red blisters. Sure. So, and blood started gushing out from my nostril. So I bled profusely then. Because he wanted a phone and he didn't want to give it to him, he punched your eye and as a result, blood was oozing from your nose. So within a split of seconds, other policemen joined him and I don't know whether he prompted them, but they joined and they gave me the beatings of my life. They slapped me, they kicked me, they pushed me, they head battered me, and finally handcuffed me and bundled me into the police vehicle. How many police officers joined? At least about 10. About 10? Yes. And they were all in police uniform? Not all of them were in uniform, but some of them were in uniform and some of them were in mufti. And when they came, did they ask you anything? Let me say this. The policeman who first assaulted me asked me to stop videotaping. But you know, in Ghana, it is not an offense to video a public incident, especially so when it involves a public officer. So um, when they came, they thought that the policeman was under attack, okay. I, 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 presumably. And so they joined him to beat me. Without asking you anything? Without asking anything. Did you tell them anything in the process of their beating you? I, I was just struggling for my life. Because at that point, there was no, they, they wouldn't listen. At that point, where was the motor rider who was confronting the police officer? Where was your driver? You know, at that point, my driver and two others, an assistant editor and another um, reporter, one writer, Sambu, they, they were sorting it out with some other people because it was a scaffold. Who were those people that were sorting it out? I'm, 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 I'm sure some of the police officers. Okay. You know. Okay. So they were not close to you. No. They were. Where was the motor rider who went to confront the police? The motor rider too was sorting out, was sorting it out together with with them. With them. So did anyone come to your aid? Nobody came to my aid. Were there passers-by? There were passers-by, but they were helpless because we had to gather some mm -hmm. evidence. So that was what Malik was doing. When Malik started, the policeman didn't attack him immediately. He started taking the video and pictures. But after some few minutes, we saw a police-branded uh, pickup vehicle. It came there, and about five or six policemen came out of the vehicle. I don't know whether it was the, uh, the policeman who called them or what. I didn't see him making any call, but they came to the scene. And as soon as the car stopped, 
the policeman became confident. That was when he went straight to Malik and started slapping him because he wanted to take the phone from him. I managed to get the phone in the process without anyone notice. Not even Malik knew the phone was with me, so I put the phone in my bag. So they were beating Malik, and his colleague policemen, when they came to the scene, instead of asking what was going on and then at least make any attempt to resolve the issue, they rather joined their colleague and beat Malik mercilessly to the extent that blood was coming out of his mm. nose. They even put him on a certain metal, the rails along the streets, like mm. that separates the pavement from the yeah. main. They put him there, his chest was on, on it, and they were hitting him. So when I saw it, I just, I thought Malik would even die because his chest was on the metal. Wow. They were hitting him more than four policemen. So I held on to Malik's back like this. I was trying to pull him from at least so that, you know, our chest is fragile. Yeah. You know, so I was just holding him like this. And the policeman who was hitting him, the, like, who was very close to him at the time, used his elbow to hit my stomach like this so that, yes, yeah, so when he hit, he hit me with his elbow, I stepped back and he told his other colleague that and he should take my bag from me. The phone might be in my bag. And I said I will not give my bag to them. And then he, when he was pulling my bag from, from me, and I was also like struggling to make sure he doesn't get the bag, he used his hand to hit my stomach. But still, I was holding on to the bag. And then I, I started feeling pains right there because I recently underwent a cesarean session to deliver my child. I, I started work, I returned from maternity leave just last Monday. And even throughout the pregnancy, I wasn't able to work because it was a high-risk pregnancy. I was sick throughout last year, so I, I was on bed rest. So I gave birth and my, my, my maternity leave ended on my, um, Friday. So I resumed work on Monday and just yesterday this happened. So after they hit me and I started feeling the pain. So you were hit twice in the tummy? Yes. So I was able to endure the pain somehow even though I was feeling it and then they dragged Malik I was following them our boss to Mr. Rahman was also following like we were pleading leave him leave him you beat him enough it's okay leave him we followed him to the pickup and then oh they pushed Malik inside so when I was how did they put him into the pickup did they carry him they were just pushing him oh, more than four policemen they were just Push him and Malik too was trying to free himself. They were stepping on him, hitting his stomach, his chest, his his eye. Blood was just coming out. So after they put him in the pickup and I was just walking to a vehicle, I started feeling dizzy and then I fell down. But so when I realized we were already in the car going to the rich hospital. So that was where I was admitted after the incident. Hmm. So when you went to the hospital, what happened? Those are some of the victims of the brutality, police brutality yesterday. They work with uh, the Ghanaian Times. Uh, their editor, uh, Dave Agbenu, we're hoping will be able to will join us so we have this conversation. But like I said, we have members from the, uh, someone from the Media Foundation for West Africa, Vivian Afua. She's here in the studio with me. They've done some work about this. Vivian, you're welcome to the studio. Thank you very much, Kipti. So, we know that about 17, you recorded about 17 such attacks just last year. Is there an update to this? Well, um, coincidentally for 2018, um, the figures are looking around 18 uh, violations. And these include um, physical attacks, mostly about 11 cases of physical attacks. These are cases where journalists were beaten by by security agents, particularly the police. There were other instances where journalists were arbitrarily arrested for their work. Um, there were instances of threats against them, um, journalists, and that includes the one of uh, Ahmed Swali. Unfortunately, we know what has happened with that. Um, we, we recognize that it's a very critical issue and it's very worrying. And um, as part of the uh, efforts to ensure that there's some sort of redress for journalists who are attacked, we are currently working with the Ghana Police Service and um, some media stakeholders, including the GJA, the NMC, the Primpa, GCRN, which is the Ghana Community Radio Network, Editors Forum, 
we have a committee that is developing a framework on police media relations and the safety of journalists. That um, journey started from last year after the case of um, Latif Idris. And the uh, uh, idea was that we would work with the police to ensure that at least some form of training is given to police officers to be able to engage journalists well and to respect the work that journalists do. And um, This was last year? This was last year How in June. How is that coming? Well, we have developed the drafts. Um, the follow-up processes is to present the draft to the police management board. Um, already, some you know progress has been made as the police has included media relations in their training, training curriculum. So that's a good thing. Um, I. What is difficult about this whole situation is that at the top level, the police is very respectful of journalists. Sure. But when it comes to the junior officers, uh, that's where the problem is. And um, so that's why we are happy that the police has included that in the training curriculum. And we are hoping that um, going forward, um, the new police officers that are being trained, they would, you know, be, be conscious. What will happen in, to the old ones? Because so, the so, so, so as part of, you know, once the, the, the document is ready, mm -hmm. it will be to engage the police officers, and that will be the work of the Ghana Police Service. Okay. Um, I know that constantly they have engagements with their officers to ensure that they are able to respect journalists, because the situation is very critical at the moment. Um, last week, we had a conversation with the Ministry of Information, mm -hmm. and they are also really concerned about uh, safety of journalist issues, and um, we are in talks about uh, the setting up of uh, a national mechanism for safety of journalists, and this is going to involve other stakeholders, um, other security agents like the, the military, and um, okay. yes. I'm just, I'm going to come to you again, Vivian, mm -hmm. but let's quickly go on the on Skype and speak to Kofi Abua. Kofi Abua is secretary of the Ghana Journalists Association and they issued a press statement about what has happened um, today and they're actually calling for immediate punishment for the police officers involved. Ms. Abua, can you hear me? Seek shelter. Hello, Ms. Abua. Yeah, yeah. Right. Good afternoon and thanks for your time this afternoon here on the polls. Now, the GJA has released a statement and in that statement take us through the demands that you're making on the police all right thank you very much um, the statement we issued was to the effect that we want the police to conduct safe investigations into this case and and also ensure that the corporates are brought to book and this should not be Another case that is going to add up to the tall list of cases of assault against journalists that have not been resolved. So we are urging the police administration to to act. I believe you want to add, but. What you've just said that we've seen a couple of these, not just a couple, a number of these cases gone cold, if you like, that the police has not been able to resolve. And a lot of people from beginning, everybody did not believe that the police will be able to investigate their own and, and administer justice to the victims. What is the GJA going to do to make sure that including the other unresolved cases, this will not end up being a cold case? Um, I think al already we are having positive signs from the police. Um, we have been told by senior officers of the police service that the officers who were involved in the, in the case have been identified. Now, uh, we have spoken to the police for public affairs office and they have indicated to us they are going to issue a press statement shortly. Following the issuance of that press statement, then we will also um, move into other, other plans that we have on the table. That plan includes speaking as audience with the IGT, and we also intend to um, go to the um, Parliamentary Select Committee on Defense and Interior, hmm. which, which has an oversight responsibility over the Ghana Police Service. We are also taking legal action 
So um, it will depend on the feedback we get from the police, and then we will know the next line of action to take. In the meantime, what can you say about the fate of uh, the one of them when the third one of them collapsed? And two of them, we've spoken to them, so it looks like they're doing okay. But the other one who collapsed, do we know how he, uh, he or she is doing? Yeah, the lady, the lady collapsed on the scene of the incident. And our report indicated that she was uh, taken to the Geta Akral Regional Hospital. And we've been in touch with her, and, and she tells us she was discharged last night. But then she she, she feels some bodily pain. But for the gentleman, um, Malik Sulemana, uh, he was issued with a, a a police medical form yesterday. Mm. And yesterday he he also went to the Coco Clinic in Accra for medical attention. Okay. Well, as you say, uh, the next action by the GJA will have to be uh, determined by what the police says uh, based on their petition that you sent already. So thank you very much for your time. Um, Kofi Yabwai, Secretary of the Ghana Journalist Association, who are demanding uh, punishment for the police officers involved in this. Let me finish with you quickly and your final words. So the GJA wants to engage the IGP. They want to engage Parliament, uh, Parliament uh, Committee. Is this something that the Media Foundation for West Africa is going to partner them in yes, doing? Yes, certainly we will do that. And this morning we spoke to ACP Uklu, who is the director at the Public Affairs Department. And um, whatever the DJ, DJ wants to do, we are going to support them. Okay. And as I mentioned, our own interventions are going on. And um, we would uh, make sure that that, that, that engagement is, you know, progresses to a certain level and uh, we'll see how best we can engage the police going forward okay. to ensure that these uh, matters are addressed. We have sent several petitions to the police so, hmm. you know, on, on these matters, including ones that happened last year that we are waiting for feedback on. So. Very well. Vivian, we'll say a very big thanks to you. Unfortunately, we run out of time, but Vivian Apua is uh, the manager, program manager for freedom of expression at the Media Foundation for West Africa there. Uh, just so you know, it's a year since Latif Idrisu was uh, assaulted by the police. That police officer has still not been found.